I'm Andrew Phillips and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to fix a faulty or non-working Joy-Con on a Nintendo Switch handheld game device. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is the game device here and you have these, these controllers that are called Joy-Cons. They pretty much slide off and on on the sides. You can use them connected or handheld. And what we have here is one that my son unfortunately dropped the controllers on it. And it had happened once before, so this is the second time that, that we've gone through this. So I figured I would do a video showing, showing you how to fix it. But basically what happened, fell on the ground, and then something got joggled loose or broke inside, which is causing it not to respond properly. Here's a clip of the issues that he's having with it. As you can see, full functionality is completely gone, whether you're using the actual controller knob or using any of the buttons on this thing no response at all from this red right side controller and even if we go ahead now we're going to slide that off and you can see even with it in a remote function still nothing we're getting nothing from this at all it's completely broken and completely unresponsive so now that we see what the problem is we're going to go ahead and open this up this is the one that's actually faulty it's the the red one which is actually the case on both this is the the one that had um, broken previously, but I'm going to go ahead and open this up so we can see what the problem is, diagnose it and fix it, and get it back in working order. So we have it open here, and I'm looking, and I'll get a close-up, but you have this lower ribbon cable, which is pinched in here. It looks like when it fell, it kind of got squashed up in there, and that might be the problem. So if that's the case, this whole piece needs to be replaced because these ribbon cables are very sensitive. If they get broken or crimped or anything, it can damage the connection. But let me get a close-up, and I'll show you what, what I'm talking about. Coming along right here, you can see it's got a little bit of a crimp right there. That's where it was pinched in that corner when it fell. That piece was hanging out, a little, I mean, very small, but it was definitely crimped in there. Okay, what I've done here is this is the one with the damaged ribbon cable, as you can see there. Let me clear that up. And I have the other controller that my son has here. And if we look inside, I open that one up. The ribbon cable on this one's fine. So what I'm going to try to do is remove this part and the ribbon cables and swap it out because I think the damage on this one was on this body part here with the battery. But let's go ahead and swap them out, which is very tedious because you've got to remove these ribbon cables from the inserts there where they have the connections. Very, very delicate. You've got to take your time. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do this in more of a fast, fast forward, but I'm going to show you what I'm doing. We're going to take that cable and that cable off, remove these two, and then plug these two in here, put it back together, and see if that solves our problem.
both ribbons have been connected. Let's lay this battery back in place. And now we're ready to seal it, but as we saw with these ribbons, they are extremely delicate. So you want to make sure that you close it without putting any crimps or strain on them. Now hopefully this one lines up because this is this is the actual Nintendo one that we took it off of. The other one was an aftermarket. But it looks like everything's lining up. Good. I don't see anything being pinched. So that's good. All right, I'm going to go ahead, screw everything back together, and then we'll go ahead and connect it and uh, see if that worked. What I have here are the pieces, I'm giving them to my son. He's going to go ahead and take the controller. We're going to see if it works now. Okay. Let's see. As we saw before we did the work to it, the, it was unresponsive when it was connected. Okay, looking good. All right, everything looks to be responding great. Okay, good. Okay, looks like everything is fixed. That was the problem. Was kind of doing like a, a heart transplant there. We're taking some of the guts out of the bad controller and swapping them out for the ones that, are, that were damaged on this one. And that's it. It's functioning great. Okay, well that pretty much wraps up this video on how to fix a damaged and non-working controller on a Nintendo Switch. In this case here, we were fortunate because I had some extra components. We were able to open it up, diagnose the problem, which was a crimped and, and broken connection on the ribbon cable. And fortunately, on the extra one we had that was broken with, a, with something else damaged, that particular component was fine. We were able to combine them. So it always helps to have some extra parts around. If not, you can order those parts. Now, with these controllers, as we saw on the inside, you get all these little tedious parts and pieces with little micro switches and knobs and things. Sometimes, if they're too small, you can't even solder them. You're just going to have to replace it. But in this case here, we were fortunate. But when you're dealing with these kind of components, even with like cell phones or these small electronic devices, a lot of times those ribbon cables can be the problem because if they get crimped or pinched, or in this case, when it fell, it kind of got lodged out of place and it was bent and broke that connection then that's what you're going to look for, and we were able to fix it. So that wraps up this video. I hope this video helped you out. Please send me any questions, any comments. I would love to hear from you. As always, I appreciate all the support. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.